Welcome to Top 10 Archive. Ah, the 90s. Anyone that grew up during this decade will likely attest that it was all that and a bag of chips. In fact, we're feeling a bit nostalgic and want to take our Generation Z viewers on a rad trip back in time. So we threw together this dope installment of things that only 90s dudes and dudettes would understand. You're, like, totally gonna hate this list. <laughs> Not. Number 10. Crystal Pepsi don't adjust your monitors, there's nothing wrong with the color. This Pepsi actually is crystal clear. Though the PepsiCo product made a brief and very quiet revival in the United States and Canada, the presence of the beverage was hardly as prominent as it was in the 90s. Kicking off the new decade, companies were starting to equate clarity with purity, and so sought to remove unnecessary color from their products to make them look cleaner. PepsiCo got sucked into this mindset and in 1992 introduced the caffeine-free, clear alternative to cola, Crystal Pepsi. The beverage started off popular, but by the end of 1993, PepsiCo was delivering its final cases to retailers. Number 9. Columbia House Nowadays, kids get to just pop on the internet and download their favorite songs. Ah, uh, but back in the day known as the 90s, we had to rely either on cassettes or CDs. Or if you were lucky, you spent three hours downloading one song on Napster. While cassettes are a relic from the past, CDs still do exist today. But we'll have to venture a guess that maybe 1% of the population under the age of 35 actually uses them. A shame, too, because you Gen Zers will never know the joy of mail-order CD clubs. On a monthly basis, you could subscribe to receive new CDs in the mail at an affordable price, sometimes even a penny. Truth be told, there were hidden costs in the fine print that made the CDs cost retail. Eh, but that didn't stop every 10-year-old from doing their own Christmas shopping. Number 8. Portable CD Players So, once you have those one-cent CDs, you gotta have something to listen to them on. You can still purchase these archaic forms of technology today, but we'd bet our iPods that no respectable adult would be caught walking around with one. Portable CD players were an incredible convenience when they first released in Japan in 1979, though not at all a consumer must-have. It wasn't until the 1990s when CDs started entering homes at a rapid pace that the portable CD player, like the popular Discman from Sony, became a staple. Today, these portable devices would drive us mad. Subpar battery life, skip-prone technology, and a sensitivity to scratches sometimes made listening to your favorite tunes more of a chore than they were worth, even the penny ones. Number 7. Passing Notes Believe it or not, there once was a time when people weren't so readily connected with one another. If a message needed to be passed along about how cute Bobby's hair was today, it took a lot more effort than a few smileys and acronyms. We once had to actually write notes. Can you believe it? You must be wondering how we survived with such a primitive form of communicating gossip. But it really wasn't that bad. One thing you can't really do with a text message is fold it up like a puzzle or some rudimentary origami. And that was really the fun of it. Number 6. Quirky Fashion Trends Every generation leaves behind its own fashion trend. The 70s were all about polyester, while the 1920s were known for bringing rise to flappers. The 90s were no different and introduced the public to the concept of minimalism and neutral colors. This was the subdued side of fashion, however, as the generation also gave us quirky trends like wearing one pant leg up, tying sweaters or shirts around the waist, thinking overalls were acceptable off the farm, manpreys, and baggy jeans. Children of the 90s may also remember the popularity behind Reebok pumps and the creation of the grunge look of ripped jeans and shaggy hair like Kurt Cobain. Speaking of hair, Guy Fieri may have the corner market on bleach blonde follicles, but it was the 90s and bands like the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, and then later Eminem, that made bleaching your hair a popular fashion trend. Number 5. Be Kind, Please Rewind It's such an outdated technology that you don't even hear people making silly jokes about having to rewind their DVDs anymore. But thanks to Blockbuster Video and the mechanics of the VHS tape, be kind, please rewind was like a 90s mantra. Chances are, if you didn't grow up in the 90s, you're more accustomed to the DVD format, which means at no point in your life did you have to deal with picking up a VHS rental and popping it in only to find that the prior renter didn't rewind the movie. You then had to sit there for what seemed like forever to rewind the tape back to the beginning. To combat these naydoers, Blockbuster campaigned, 
be kind, please rewind, as their catchy slogan. And when that didn't work, the company implemented a fee to crack down on discourteousness. Number four, Pogs. They were as silly as their name makes them sound, but it's hard to deny how addicting they were. Pogs were the brand named version of Milk Caps, a childhood favorite in the mid 90s. The game was simple and involved a stack of milk caps and a piece called the Slammer, the mother of all Pog that's typically made of hard plastic or metal. Players would stack their caps and, using the Slammer, cause the pile to scatter. Any caps that landed face up were awarded to the slamming player. Milk caps didn't become incredibly viral until the World Pog Federation came into the picture and introduced caps worth collecting. Pogs featured an assortment of characters no 90s kid could resist, including Power Rangers, Beavis and Butthead, and The Simpsons, along with a wide variety of original designs. Number 3. Goosebumps Books R.L. Stein was to children of the 90s as Stephen King is to the entire horror community. He was a visionary that created the ghouls, monsters, and gnomes that taunted the dreams of the youthful. The stories were often a kid-friendly take on classic horror creeps, from vampires to werewolves to headless ghosts. Occasionally, Stein would draw something incredibly offbeat and unique out of his hat of monstrosities, like the horror at Camp Jelly Jam, the egg monsters from Mars, and Monster Blood, a series of goosebumps that saw a variety of grotesque mutations come to life. The 90s were a great time for spooky classics. While R.L. Stein was dishing out classic after classic in book form, the Crypt Keeper was keeping us entertained and spooked on TV in Tales from the Crypt. Number 2. The Dial-Up Tone and the Internet When you want to hop on the internet, all you need to do is turn on your computer or unlock your cell phone. Back in the golden age of the 90s, it was a process to get yourself online that required you to sign in using the correct local landline number and password combination. Then you had to sit through a dial tone as your computer literally dialed out, struggled to connect to the internet, and in most instances, tied up the home's landline, making inbound and outbound calls impossible. It was the primitive age of the internet, and though it had all of the essentials one would need, such as, well, basically just Yahoo, it was all marred by that taunting dial tone. <laughs> If that doesn't sound awful enough, very early internet was a pay-per-hour setup. Thankfully, getting lost on YouTube wasn't an option back then, which was probably a good thing. Imagine the wait times. Number 1. Y2K As you may have noticed, the world didn't end in the year 2000. But that wasn't the thought all throughout the mid to late 90s. Sure, you may have lived through the Mayan apocalypse and the rapture, but there was no more interesting apocalyptic scenario than Y2K. It wasn't going to be a natural disaster or divine intervention, but instead, it was all going to boil down to the capacities of computer networks built and designed by humans. What was feared was that computer networks would crash. Seeing as how these networks only registered the last two digits of the year, it was believed these networks would register the year 2000 as the year 1900 and simply just stop working. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to visit and sign up with our friends at Geek Fuel by using our affiliate link found in the description section. For just $20 a month, you'll receive at least $50 worth of geeky stuff that you'll actually use. Each box comes with a t-shirt you'll actually want to wear and a free Steam game download, usually valued at $10 or more. Don't miss out on this monthly box that Stan Lee himself endorses. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to keep updated on more lists like these, box openings, and giveaways. Yeah, I still have all the CDs from Columbia House that I ordered. It's huge collection. <laughs> I was excited. The other day I found all my greatest hits from the Carpenters and Kenny Rogers. What?